Then if you have your Bibles with you this morning, we would ask that you come uh, uh, turn with us to Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32, and we're going to begin reading uh, in the first verse. Uh, Genesis chapter 32, in the first verse, the Bible says, And Jacob went on his way, and Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's host. And he called the name of that place Mahananam. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, unto the land of Seir, countries of Edom. And he commanded them, saying, Thus shall you speak unto my lord Esau, thy servant Jacob saith thus, I have sojourned with Laban, and stayed there until now. I have oxen, and asses, and flocks, and men servants, and women servants, and I have sent to tell my lord that I may find grace in thy sight. And the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to thy brother Esau, and he cometh to meet thee, and four hundred men with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people, and was with him that was with him, and the flocks, and the herds, and the camels, unto two bands. And say, if Esau come, the, uh, come to the one company, and smite it, then the other company which is left shall escape. And Jacob said, O God, my father, uh, and Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, the, the Lord which set us unto me, return unto thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. I am not worthy of the least of thy mercies, the least of all thy, the mercies, and of all, and of all the truth which thou hast shewed unto thy servant, for which my staff I passed over Jordan, and now I'm become two bands. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for another opportunity to be in your house. Lord, we thank you uh, for this thy uh, people you have gathered in this day, Lord, uh, that we may look into your word, Lord, that we may uh, take it for what it's worth and what it says, Lord, and that you'd be faithful uh, to give us great uh uh, a presence of yourself to this morning. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, uh, maybe some not so familiar scripture and scripture will be uh, teaching on revealed truth today. We'll be preaching on how God uh, reveals himself to us uh, periodically. Now, every time the word of the Lord is read, it is honorable to God, but it is not always revealed truth. That's why uh, some people are redeemed and saved, and other people are not, because it's not always revealed to every person every yeah. time. Uh, Brother Junior was saying something about his neighbor woman. You know why uh, she doesn't uh, understand? It's because it's not revealed. Uh, it, it's not a cognitive truth. If you're looking at cognition, you've missed it by about 16 inches because it's a revealed truth of the inward man. And even your lost condition, if it's not revealed unto the inward man, you certainly remain lost and go to hell. And so we find that Jacob, throughout his journeys of life, was revealed time and time again uh, the presence of the Almighty. In our text verse this morning, it says, And Jacob went on his way. Now, I won't preach on that very long this morning, but I, I will caution you very much this morning. Uh, be careful of going your way and not God's way. Uh, his way, uh, the Lord God's way and your way are usually very dichotomous. They're not on the same track. And your way seems good to you and not always to God. And you know what? What I have found in my own life experience, it's easier on this flesh to go my way than it is to go God's way. And so we find that uh, while he was returning home, Jacob was still in the mindset that uh, he was going to go his way. Uh, verse 2, And when Jacob saw them, 
He said, this is God's host. Um, he saw the great band of angels. He, uh, he saw uh, an unbelievable presence of God. Uh, you know, I, I fully believe this, and you will never see God in His flesh because it's tar, far too sinful. But if you don't understand the presence of God, you probably don't know Him. Mm. Uh, and so as Jacob is going along this way, he says, I understand and see, I, I see the very presence of God. I understand who he, who he is. And when Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's host. And he called the place Mah uh, Mahananim, Mahanam, and Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother. Now, can you imagine experiencing the presence of God and then taking things into your own hand? Now, he had reason to fear Esau, and we'll see that in a minute. But when you come up with your own plan, <coughs> Is that trusting God? And certainly it isn't. Now, that doesn't mean that we need to be foolhardy. I mean, you and your wife and your children have to eat. But are you trusting God's plan? Or are you wanting something of your own agenda? Something that, that, that buoys you up? And so he, he has this incredible experience with God and actually beholds His presence... And then he comes to plan B and says, you go, tell, you go tell Esau I'm coming. And Jacob sent messages before him to Esau, his brother, unto the land of Seir and uh, the country of Edom. And he commanded them, saying, Thus shall you speak unto my lord Esau, thy servant Jacob saith thus, I have sojourned with Laban and stayed there until now. Now, again, the reason he's upset, he had wronged uh, Esau time and time and time again. And we will find that uh, Jacob showed himself and displayed himself as a lost man time and time and time again against his own brother. Uh, you know what? Uh, I don't know what your testimony is with your family, but what I have found, usually the men of God have less testimony with their own people than they do anyway, anyone else. And you know why? They know you. Mm -hmm. They know you in the good, and they know you in the bad. And, and so we find as he's going along here, he, he experiences God in a unique way, and then he begins to come up with his own plan. Now, he wanted to circumvent the anger of Esau. You know what? Sin has a price in this life too. Now we always talk about the damnation of hell and the eternal separation of God. But listen, there's a penalty for sin here. That's why Adam died. It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't just the penalty that was to come. Adam died, and that is a penalty of sin. And you know what? The regret you feel for sin, the anger that comes on you by others because of your wrong treatment, that is a result of sin. And you know what? It, it's going to be paid for. I told you time and time again, you know who I have the least testimony with today is my friends from my high school years. And you know what? Justly so. You're going to believe a preacher that you party with? You see what I'm saying? That, that, I still bear that. It, it doesn't go away because I'm a preacher and it doesn't go away because it was 30 years ago. And so we find here that, that Jacob is experiencing that. And so he sends this messenger forward. Now notice, you be careful with I statements when you're ministering, preacher boys. Don't you start with I and me. Because notice what he says. This is why I say Jacob is not trusting God here. And I have oxen and asses and flocks and men servants and women servants. And I, ha and I have sent to tell my Lord that I may find grace in thy sight. Uh, very careful about I statements. Uh, you, you know why the church is here at Dover, the Lord. Doesn't have anything to do with me. 
doesn't have anything to do with my ministry. It's the goodness of the Lord. And so we find then that the, uh, that Jacob wasn't still trusting in the presence of the Almighty. He still relied on what he was doing. Then was Jacob, uh, excuse me, verse 6, and the messengers returned to Jacob saying, We came to thy brother Esau, and he cometh to meet thee with four hundred men with him. Now, does it ever say in your King James Bible that he was coming to kill Jacob? No. Now, they had a misunderstanding. And Esau got caught one time, just so. And he says, when daddy's got the dead, I'm going to kill him. But you know how long that had been by this point? 20 years. You know, anger has... Uh, a way of quieting itself, don't it? Mm -hmm. uh, and I will say this, you mellow with age. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, but what did he assume? Mm -hmm. you, you know what our problem is most time is we, we doubt God's protection. We doubt, and you know what really is when you are doubting God's protection? You're doubting his ability. You're, you're doubting his power because if we if we uh, if we doubt his protection, what we're really saying is you can't handle this. And so it never says that he was calling for a military attack, but Jacob immediately took it at that and, and, and went into fight mode. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people that was with him and the flocks and the herds and the camels into two bands, and I'm assuming that's by his wives, and said, if Esau come to one company and smite it, then the other company which is left shall escape. And Jacob said, O oh, God of my father Abraham, God of my father Isaac, the Lord which said us unto me, Return unto thy kindred and do and to thy uh, return unto thy country and to the kindred, and I will deal with thee. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies. You ever thought about that? How unworthy we really are? How minute. You know, uh, he certainly didn't look forward and see any kind of content within me, did he? Any kind of hope? Any kind of usefulness? He made me for who I am because of his goodness and grace. Uh, and, and so we find here as uh, Jacob is pouring his, uh, his heart unto the Lord, he says... Uh, You've done it all. I'm not worthy of this, but you did it. Which thou hast shewed unto thy servant. Now what he praised the Lord the most was the truths that he showed to him. And, and that's why I get back to revealed truth is what you need. Uh, this kind of knowledge won't get you very far. Now, there's nothing wrong with knowledge, and certainly we should study to show thyself approved unto the Lord, and the more you can learn about the biblical text, the better off you're going to be. But, uh, we was talking about Kenny's favorite subject the other night, Algebra 2, and uh, we both admitted that huh, we got by the skin of our teeth, right? No. You know what? I've been all right without it, ain't you? But I can't go a day without the scripture. Mm -hmm. And so this is not going to help you. You know, when they look at you sadly and say, there's nothing else I can do, this is not going to do good. But knowing the Lord Jesus Christ and him saying it's well mm -hmm. in the time of storm, listen, that's everything. And so we find that that Jacob is giving praise unto the Lord uh, for what he had revealed to him, the revealed truth, of all, and of all the truth that thou hast shewed unto thy servant. For with my staff I passed over Jordan, and now am he come unto two bands. Now, how did he get here, and, and, and why was he praising the Lord in this way? Go me way uh, back now to chapter 25, Genesis 25, and uh, verse 26. Genesis uh, 
25 and verse 26, uh, the Bible says the twins were being born, and after uh, and after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob, and Isaac was three score years old when when she bare them. Now, all of you that know your Bible know that Jacob and Esau were twins. Uh, we have a twin or a triplet, depending on how you look at it, here today. Those people have the exact same age, but all of them, if you've ever dealt with any kind of twins, very different nature, aren't they? I've never met a, twin, a set of twins that were in unison on their nature. You know, you always hear the old expression, the evil twin. Yeah, there's a lot of truth in that. If you know much twins, there's a lot of truth in that. And, and, and so we, we find that in this, that Jacob reaches out and catches, you know, what he, was, he was wanting the identity of his brother. From the moment they were born, he wanted the inheritance. He wanted the notoriety. He wanted to be the one in charge. See, you know what that is, and that, that's the nature of the flesh again, that's who we are. We're never satisfied with who we are, are we? Never really satisfied with how God made us. Never really satisfied with the position that He placed us in. We always want more and more and more. When I, was, uh, when I was in high school, I wanted blonde hair. Now, can you imagine this mock? A black hair being blonde. How stupid, right? You know what I wanted? I wanted something I was not, didn't I? I wanted something that was really <laughs> impossible to obtain because if I had bleached it, and I cried one time, and praise be to God, it didn't work out. Uh, you know what? It had grown back, and then black roots would be just as black as they are this morning, wouldn't they? See, that's dissatisfaction. Wanting something you're not. And you know, as years go by, I think at least in the flesh we satisfy a little bit, but we still want more and we want more. So it wasn't necessarily a bad thing just in Jacob. It was showing and displaying the very nature of man. What did he want? The core thing he wanted, he wanted to be first. And we do too. We want to be first. We want to be forthright. We want to be number one. We want to be the number one singer. We want to be the number one preacher. We want to be the number one teacher. We want first place. That is the nature of man. And, and so we find then that even though Jacob was very sinful, uh, that, that's who he was. And if you know his meaning, the, the uh, spiritual meaning of his name, the was thief, and he was that. He was a thief to the very core. He wanted somebody else's character. Drop down to verse 29, and Jacob sawed pottage. Now that just makes, that just making a pan of beans. That's just uh, using lentils and cooking up beans and getting them ready for the noon meal. Uh, and so he is preparing and getting ready. His, his mind was to feed himself because that's our mind is we always want to feed the flesh. And Isaac, uh, excuse me, and Jacob sawed pottage and Esau came from the field and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. Now, can you imagine, and, and I have one brother left, and he's a big old boy, uh, and I can imagine James coming to my house and saying to Larry, uh, give me a bowl of beans. And if I didn't have them, I'd do what I could to get together, and what I did have, I would try to give him. But his nature, Jacob's nature was says, you give me something for it. That's our nature too, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You give me something for it. And you know what? If you, you know, I, I would never take a, 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 a starving sibling and do that way. Well, let me say this. You don't know what you would do in this flesh. You think you do. But when it comes down to it, you don't know what you would do. And you know the rest of the story? He's 
steals his or sells out his brother's birthright uh, for the bowl of soup. Now, let me tell you, consider two things. We see two forms of depravity. First of all, that we see that Jacob was willing to make the offer. And then we see Esau's nature that it didn't mean nothing to him. See, this life don't mean <laughs> who you are today. Now, what, what was a birthright really about? It means he was the eldest. And not just a portion, but everything would go to Esau. And uh, so what was he really selling? His position, right? Ever sold out your position? You're supposed to be a Christian and you act like the world, you act like the dog. You know what you've done? You sold your position. And you know what? You'll never get it back either. Just like them boys I was telling you about I used to hang with. I would never be a witness to them. I'd like to be. But I'm just being honest. Most of them are dead anyway. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Uh, once it's sold, it's sold. And, and, and you won't regain it in, in this life at least. And so he sold out why? Because it really didn't mean anything went to him to start with. Now go with me uh, to chapter 27, verse 6. Genesis 27, verse 6. The Bible says uh, this. And Rebekah spake unto Jacob her son, Behold, I hear thy father speak unto Esau thy brother, saying, Bring me venison and make me savory meat that I may eat and bless thee before the and bless uh, and bless thee before the Lord before my death. Now I want you to see you be very careful of the advice you take and from where it comes from. Now what do we know about Rebecca? She was a heathen. <laughs> Think about her brother. She was brother and sister with Laban. Why do you think about his good moral character, right? Where'd he come from, right? See, be careful. And it wasn't just because it was his mama. It wasn't just because she was a, a girl, a female. It was poor advice. It, it was advice from a woman that probably was never, ever saved. She was just the best one used by God. I had two boys. And one would be in, in the genealogy of Christ. That's really all her purpose was. <laughs> right? <laughs> but he takes advice for her. You know, you can uh, honor your father and mother without doing what they say. Few of y'all knew my dad. Y'all want me to honor him and be like daddy was? <laughs> Certainly not. I hope he want better for me, right? <laughs> so... But I had to honor him. I took care of him when he was dying. So you don't have to be like them and you don't have to follow their advice to honor them. So really, if Jacob had anything about him at all on this occasion, he'd say, well, Ma, uh, I see what you're saying, but no. I see what you're trying to get across, but no. But you know, we go back to his nature, catching that heel and wanting to be first, and he does exactly what Mother says. We need to be very careful from whence our advice comes and be cautious from whom we take it. Be sure they're saved godly men. Now drop down to verse 11. And Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. My father, peradventure, will fill, fill me and, shall sing to him, and, and I shall sing to him as a deceiver. You know what he was? He was a deceiver. He was a liar. He was a liar from the inside out. And you know what you are before you're redeemed? You're a liar from the inside out. You know what? A, a false profession will make you even more a liar from the inside out. Because once, once you've done that, you want to present something real, don't you? You want to have a facade that says, yes, He's a Christian. She's a Christian. And it will make you lie and lie and lie some more, right? And listen, you don't have to speak it to be lying. He said, I'm going to look like a deceiver. I'm going to look like a liar. And you know the plan? They uh, covered him up with uh, camel's hair or goat's hair. And they fixed him up so he would look hairy. 
And then after that, they, they put some of uh, Esau's clothes on him. So I don't know if Esau stank or wore cologne or what his issue was, but I know they smelled different. And he put his clothes on so he didn't smell like Esau. And he went in and he did the deal. And then a little bit later, the Bible says this, and he ran for his life. You, you know what sin will bring fear? Sin will bring fear. Sin will make you uh, look about and, and have that feeling that everybody's looking at you. Sin will bring fear. Sin will want you to uh, stabilize the flesh and get in a safe place when we know from uh, Jacob's own life that's exactly what he did. Uh, Genesis uh, 28 in the first verse. Genesis 28 in the first verse, the Bible says, And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Now I want you to see that he had already received the birthright. He would already received the blessing. He was going to get everything. He was going to get what was coming to him. And now, because of that transition of power, if you will, the authority had moved from Esau to Jacob. Now, the instruction was coming to Jacob instead of his brother Esau. And the result was this, was Esau married a heathen of the land, and all those tribes came from him. And they became the enemies of God. Verse 2. Arise, go to Padanaram, to the house of Beth, uh, Bethuel, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. Now, I don't know about you, and I know that in this time it's a little bit different because we're closer to uh, creation, but I didn't even have any first cousins I was interested in. They were all not the prettiest girls in town. You see what I'm saying? And so, you know, sometimes the instruction you get from God is going to seem odd, isn't it? it it's not going to seem to line up with man's kind of thinking, but he says, you go, you go marry Laban's, one of Laban's daughters. Notice the promise in verse 3, and God, uh, and God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee that thou mayest be a multitude of people. The same blessing, the same statement that came again and again and again. And give thee the blessing of Abraham to thee and to thy seed with thee that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger and God, which God gave unto Abraham. And Isaac sent away Jacob and he went to Padanaram unto Laban, the son of Bethuel, uh, the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob's and Esau's mother. And Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Padanaram to take a wife from thence. And as he blessed him, he gave him charge, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. And Jacob obeyed his father and his mother and was gone to Padanaram. Now, if you, I want you to notice two things. We find the first level of obedience from Jacob. Now, uh, we were talking about, uh, you know, children don't just jump on and be obedient on their own. Uh, that's why the Bible teaches us to train up our children in the way they should go. Because you know what? They don't come in with a sinless nature. They come in with an evil, ungodly nature. And you have to train them. Or listen, though, if you don't believe that, look at some of these kids that's walking through Walmart. Mm -hmm. I've seen some behavior in there. If I had done that, y'all would have never met me. Mom, I knew Barry got a little cemetery got a car all and my mom killed her. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Just crazy stuff. And you know, to the point you want to jerk them up and whip them yourself. And we see the first left against the nature of man. If you go hundreds of miles that way and you marry your first cousin. And you bring it back here. You know what? That, that's outside of man's understanding. And certainly at what a child they been, would have been, you wouldn't have think that he'd done it. But he did exactly as he was instructed and he left. And if you know the second part, 
Esau was mad about it, and Esau went and married a woman the same time, a heathen out of the land. And you know what? That that became a sore in Jacob's side in a national sense that still goes on even today. Yeah. What do you think is up on the Temple Mount today? Esau's ancestors, or his his lineage, right? That's that's where the fight comes from. See. When you see somebody blessed of God, does it ever make you mad? Don't tell me you haven't wondered why some people are more successful in the ministry than you. All right? You know what? Be happy with what you have. Esau's jealousy ran into sin, did it not? Esau's jealousy of the position uh, that Jacob had received caused him to sin even yet more. And we find for the very first time that Jacob goes and tries to follow after what the Lord would have him uh, to do. Uh, drop down to verse 11. And he, wa- he lighted upon a certain place. Isn't it, isn't it wonderful when God brings you to a specific place? Isn't it? You, you think about the day the Lord saved your soul and how you arrived at that little place and how that you heard the gospel preached for the first time with meaning that spoke to your heart, not just your ears. Listen, we're in the South. And listen, none of us can really merit a time where we had not have heard of the goodness of God. But see, that's a lot different than being written on your heart. Remember, remember the believers that were Gentiles and and, and Paul compared it this way. They do that which is in the law <laughs> because it's written on the tables of their heart. That's an amazing thing. You remember that? Well, see, Esau's fixing to have, uh, excuse me, Jacob is fixing to have that experience at a specific place, at a specific time, in a specific dispensation. It's fixing to happen. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them down for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. Now, how could that be possible? Now, I personally like the firm pillow. But I don't want to rock. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. You know who brings sleep according to the word of the Lord? God does. When you know you're tossing and turning and can't get no rest and your mind's running a thousand miles an hour, you know what that happens because God's not in it. And it's not just stress. You know, that's the world's echo. Everything is stress. Oh, you're under too much stress. You're under too much stress. Blah, blah, blah. No, it's because you don't have any peace. We need peace in this world, don't we? Yeah. Not just spiritual peace. We need peace that when we lie down, we know it's okay. You know what? I bet before she met uh, uh, the prophet, that little widow was stressed all the time, don't you? Down to the point she's going to use the last little bit. Last little meal was going to be made, and that was going to be it. I bet you didn't sleep a week the night before, do you? See, but after that, God's man came along, and she heard the message of Elijah and Elisha and obeyed him. Everything turned. You know what? I bet you slept like a log that night. See, when you have the peace of God, you sleep wherever he puts you. And so he makes him a little bed out of rocks and he kicks back and puts his head on a rock ready to sleep for the night. And notice what happened. And he dreamed and behold a ladder set up uh, on the earth the top of it reached to heaven and behold the angels of God ascending and descending on it and behold the Lord uh, stood above it and said I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father the God of Isaac uh, the uh, <laughs> The land whereon thou liest to thee will I give it into thy seed, and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, and in thee, and in thee, and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And I want you to see that uh, he restores a promise and introduces himself uh, 
to Jacob. See, it don't matter if you've met God. The question is, has God met you? Has he came to you specifically? I make the statement time after time again, the older I get, the more I believe it. I believe the only two that were saved that came out of Israel uh, was, uh, was the two prophets, Jacob and uh, Samuel. Yes. And four and a half million died and went to hell. I really believe that. Just because they were physically delivered don't mean they're spiritually delivered, does it? Well, and if you see, he let the adults die in idolatry, didn't he? He said, you won't go in. They don't want them to die out. Right? And, and so we find then that this specific experience on this specific time, on this specific occasion, was a necessity in the life of Jacob. Now, we see that the fruits of salvation uh, were not immediate. Now, drop down to verse 18. And, and Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put, it, uh, put up for his pillows, and he set up for it a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. He learned to worship. That's a trademark uh, of, a, of a redeemed individual. Go to 29. Uh, uh, Genesis 29, verse 18. The Bible says this, And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve these seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. Now, I want you to notice two things. Uh, first of all, um, he already left Rachel alone. And then the second thing, he learned to work. See, Laban was just as mean as he was. <laughs> And he wasn't going to let Rachel be stole, was he? He had stole and lived off his mama, and he had finally learned to work. You know what men that are truly saved by the grace of God do? They will work and provide for their families. The Bible says if they don't, they're worse than an infidel, right? Yeah. And, and, and so we find then that here we find Jacob learning for the very first time the importance of work and doing uh, what God had called him to do. Drop down to verse uh, 25 of the same chapter. And it came to pass in the morning, he married her. He, he had uh, spent the night with her. And behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, why is it this that thou hast done unto me? Did not I serve thee for Rachel? Wherefore hast thou beguiled me? You know, in one way, certainly uh, this was a mean thing to do. And in another way, remember what I told you about uh, rebound sin? Yeah. Just as good for him as it was for, old, uh, for his brother, was it not? He woke up and... You know what? He'd been rooked. You know why he was rooked? Because he'd been rooked before. He was a liar. He was a cheater. He was a stealer. And flop, it turned around on him. You know, one thing I'd say, if he couldn't say a whole lot about it, he could. Seven years. That's a long time. And when you're young, it really seems like a long time. Does it not? Seven years ago, Bella was a baby. Seven years ago, huh? My, my oldest granddaughter was an infant. That's a long time, huh? Working all the time in the cattle, and you wake up and you've been rooked. <laughs> he deserved it. He absolutely deserved it. And, and so we find then that he's learning the importance of work, and he's learning the wages of sin. He's learning what to take back on sin is, and huh, now with the shoe on the other foot, he's no longer a happy camper. Notice what he says. And Laban said it must be, uh, it must, and Laban said it must not be done so in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill her week, <laughs> seven years, and we will give, her, uh, give thee also for the service that thou shalt serve. With and he met and with me yet seven other years, and he certainly did that. Um, he, he was preferable to her. Verse 28 And Jacob did so and fulfilled her week, and he gave him Rachel his daughter to wife, and Laban gave to Rachel his daughter, uh, Belihah, 
his handmaid to be her maid. And so we find then that he understands, and I want you to see that, again, he's a saved man making very, very poor decisions. Now, this is my own thought, and you take it and you study it for what you will, and, and look into the Bible. Rachel was an idolater from the inside out. She was not God's chosen. Remember uh, all the lies she told when Laban was running them? And, uh, and he wanted to look because all the idols were missing. And he said, I know y'all stole some of them idols. I want them back. And if you remember, it was right after oh, oh, uh, Jacob was getting right with God. And he said, burn all that mess up. Ground it to post. Get rid of it. And you know, apparently old Rebecca, I mean old Rachel, didn't get on the job, did she? And she lied to her daddy and said, man, I can't get up and let you look in this trunk. Uh, I'm in the way of woman. You know, she was lying. She was expecting a baby. He was lying like a dog. Benjamin was already on the way. So she was an idolater. She was a liar. And you know what? She gave her life for it, did she not? She never made that promise to her. She died in her sin, did she not? And so we find then that uh, he had not learned his lesson quite yet because he was still preferable to the things over sin. Now notice when he had a salvation experience back when he was first coming to his uncle's house and now years later he's still making poor decisions. You know what that says to me? Here I've been saved for over 40 years as a 12-year-old boy. I can still make very poor decisions spiritually. Can I not? Right. And he did too. This is 20 years later. And he's still making lousy spiritual decisions. And certainly that's our lot in life too if we're not very, very careful. Uh, Genesis 30 in the first verse. And Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no ch children. And Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children else I die. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel. And he said, Am I in God's stead? Who hath withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? Now, I want you to notice two things. First of all, oh, Rachel's wanting to take the, take the steering wheel, ain't she? She's going to be the leader. She's going to be the driver. And secondly, I want you to see, he knows something about God. He says, I can't make you have a baby. That's in the hands of God. But I don't think old Rachel believed that, do you? She said, you go in to buy them. You take care of this thing for me. Right? Okay. <laughs> that's pretty poor spiritual guidance, ain't it? And that's a pretty poor spiritual response because he obeyed her. You know what? Save man can obey sin. Can you not? I know I have. And, and so we find then that... <laughs> What brought them to this state of getting back with God was really them leaving his blessedness to start with. Last place, Genesis 30, 32. The Bible says this. I will pass through all thy flock today, removing from thence all the speckled and the spotted cattle, and all the brown cattle from the sheep, and the spotted and the speckled among the goats. And of such shall be my hire. So shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come, when it shall come for my hire before my, thy face. Everyone that, is, everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and brown among the sheep, they shall be counted stolen with me. Now see, we finally find that Jacob the thief begins to understand the provision of God. Up to now, he had looted and stole and done everything he could to be successful in this life. And now he puts it out for God. He and he changes the contract. Well, actually, Laban changes the contract. And uh, every time he prays and lays it by, if it was speckled, they buried speckled. And if it was solid, they buried solid. And if it was ringed, they buried ringed. 
And it was because of the faithfulness of God. You know how you're going to make it to tomorrow? By the faithfulness of God. So when God said, get, get back home, he's going to do it. See, sometimes we need to remember how faithful and wonderful our God really is. Do we not? We don't need to be thieves. We don't need to be sent, even centered on this life. Listen, yes. our time is short. Amen. If you live to be 150 years old, our time is very, very short. You'll turn around in a few years and be as old as me. And you think, oh, i got plenty of time now. You know, uh, uh, I remember when South Road Church called me. I was 28, somewhere around in that age. Adam was eight, Matthew was five, and Sarah was two. We went down there, you know what? I was gonna change the world. I was gonna make, uh, I, I was gonna, I, it was gonna be so good that they were gonna have to build on down at South Road. You know what? In a year, they drove both me out. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Go and grace. Uh, God has a plan. Take your time. Let God be the leader. Let God be the sustainer. And He'll do it. I found Him to be faithful. I, I've not gone hungry yet. I, I've not lacked for the goodness of God. And dear friend, neither will you.